Hello math people. Welcome to day two of unit 2b graphing polynomials. Today we're going to look at writing a polynomial in factored form given the roots. We are on page okay, page five of your notes. Okay, so let's just kind of give some a definition first. The degree of a polynomial is the highest exponent. Degree is the highest exponent. And according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, it tells us the maximum number of solutions. Now, if you recall, remember solutions can be real, they can be irrational, and they can be imaginary. So when we look at the highest exponent, that's going to tell us the maximum number of times it can cross the x-axis. It may cross fewer times, but this is the maximum number of times that it can. So in this first equation, we have x squared minus 6x plus 7. Our highest exponent is 2. So that means the maximum number of roots is 2. So the reason I have decimals up is because let's graph that and see if that is true. So we go to x squared minus 6x minus 7. And we can see that it crosses the x-axis. It has a root of negative 1 and a root of 7. Okay? Now if we look at the next problem, we see that it crosses the x-axis. It should cross the x-axis three times because the highest degree is three, so the maximum number of roots should be three. So let's see if that's true, let's graph it. So we have x cubed uh, plus three x squared minus nine x plus five. And if we graph that on Desmos, now we say the maximum number of roots is 3, but we see that we only have two roots. We have one at negative 6, and we ha have one at positive 5. Notice the one at positive, five, at po at positive 1. Sorry, I don't know why I said 5. At positive 1, um, it does what we call bounce off the x-axis, and that's going to tell us something later. Um, we're going to talk about the fact that it bounces means there is a multiplicity there. And we're going to talk about what that means later when we talk about multiplicity. All righty, let's do the next one. So the next one has a maximum of 3. So the maximum number of roots is 3. So if we were to graph that, we get x minus 8. Now once again, this is the maximum number of roots. That doesn't mean it will have all three. And so if we notice on this one, this one has um, only one. The maximum number is three, but it only has one root at two. And we're going to learn that that has because that it has imaginary roots, which we will talk about later. x squared plus 4 the maximum number of roots it should have is 2 because it's quadratic. But there's going to be something weird that happens when we graph that. So we clear that. We get x squared plus 4. Notice it never crosses the x-axis. So what does that tell us if it never crosses the x-axis? So the maximum it should have is 2, but it actually has no, and I'm going to say real solution, because it does have two solutions. They're just imaginary. And remember when we did the quadratic formula yesterday, we looked at um, imaginary roots. So this one would have two imaginary roots. Um, for the next one, how many roots should this, how many should that have? 2 
and you will see that this one has only one. X squared plus 6X plus 9. Notice this has only one root, and that root is negative 3. And again, that's because we see that there's some bouncing there. I don't know why I'm having a hard time drawing that little um, brace. But this has bouncing. It has multiplicity going on, which we will talk about later. And the last one should have three. So that's the highest exponent. It should have three. Let's see how many it has. I think that one does have three. X cubed plus 4x squared. Minus 4x, minus 16. So we see that this one does actually have three roots, and those roots are negative 4, negative 2, and 2. Okay? So we should be able to look at the polynomial and tell the maximum number of roots and then by graphing it, we can actually find the roots. So this is what we call factored form. Each, each of the fact, um, this quadrat, this is a quadratic equation if we were to multiply it out, but it's what we call factored form. So from this, we should be able to tell the roots. So the degree is going to be 2 because x times x will give me x squared. So the degree is 2. That will be the uh, maximum number of uh, solutions could be 2. When you have a second degree, if you recall, that's called a quadratic. And to find these roots, we set the factored form equal to 0. So we're going to have x minus 3 equals 0 and x plus 4 equals 0. So when we add 3 to both sides, we get x is equal to 3 and x is equal to negative 4 are our roots. For the next one, we have x times x times x, which is going to make that x cubed. And so my degree is 3. A third degree polynomial we call a cubic, which we um, did the first day of this unit. So we're going to have a cubic. So that means we have to set each of these equal to zero. So I'll have 2x plus 2 equals zero, x minus 1 equals zero, and x plus 4 equals zero. And solving this, I'm going to get um, negative 1, 1, and negative 4. Those are going to be my three solutions. Now, when I talk about multiplicity, this is an example of what multiplicity would look like. We have one factor that's squared. So this is still a second degree polynomial, which means it's quadratic. And because of the multiplicity, it has only one root, and that root would be found when we do x minus one equals zero. So it has one root at x equals 1. Okay? On this last one, we're going to have three roots. We have, I'm sorry, we're going to be a cubic function because we have x, oh, not that. We have x times x times x, which again is going to give us x cubed. So that's going to be a third degree polynomial that's called a cubic. And then we have to set each of these equal to 0. And I'm just going to do it here because I might need a little space. 3x plus 1 equals 0. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. I get 3x is equal to negative 1. Divide by 3. So x is equal to negative 1 third. Then I have x minus 4 equals 0. So I add 4 to both sides. I get x is equal to 4. And then I have x plus 6 equals 0. Subtract 6, and so I get x is equal to negative 6. And those are the three um, roots of that function. So 
what we see is that if we're given given the equation in factor form, we can find the roots. But let's wor work backwards. What if we're given the roots, can we find the polynomial in factor form? What I want you to notice, notice the pattern. When we had x minus 4, our solution was positive 4. So this gave me a solution of positive 4. When I had x plus 6, that gave me a solution of negative 6. So you can see that my root is the opposite of what is written in factor form. So what does that mean? That means if I wanted to find the, uh, the factor form of this, I would take the opposite. So I am given, let's make sure I have it right. I'm given x minus 3. So in factor form, that would be x plus 3 x minus 1 would be x plus 1, and x at 2 would be x minus 2. So I'm going to do the opposite. Okay? So um, how about 5, 5, 4, and negative 1? That would be x minus 5, x minus 4, x plus 1. When I have plus or minus, that means um, negative 5 and positive 5. So I'm going to have x plus 5, x minus 5. For x 0 and 5, I would have x plus 0, x minus 5. Now, of course, x plus 0 is just x, so I can write that as just x times x minus 5. Okay, and then we can also be given as a graph. So notice we can find the roots of this graph. Just where does it cross the x-axis? It cross the x-axis at negative one and at one. Notice this is um, increments of two. So if this is two, this must be one. So then that would be x plus one, x minus one, okay? So go ahead and pause the video and finish the last three. Okay, welcome back. My roots here are negative 3, 0, and 3. So this is going to be x plus 3, x, x minus 3. Uh, my root here is negative 5. So it's going to be x minus 5. But because it's quadratic, it's a parabola, I have to say it's x minus 5 squared. And finally, my roots are negative 5, uh, negative 3, negative 1, and 1. I think I got that right. So that's going to be x plus 5 because I'm doing the opposite x plus 3, the opposite, x plus 1, and finally x minus 1, okay? So what we've learned today is that we can find the roots if it's given in factor form by setting the factor form, each factor equal to 0. We can work backwards if given the roots, then we can write it in factor form. And that is what we've learned today. Um, Come back tomorrow and we will learn um, a little bit more about graphing 